Hey guys, so I, uh, my name is Sound of a Gap and this is Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Welcome back to a new episode and in this one we will start off by stealing a document for a female dwarf so that she can marry her love. And by that we will have to do another very interesting and unique puzzle battle which in the end will break my game and my footage as well. But fear not, I will still tell you what happened afterwards. And then in the end we are, we are fighting a red dragon. Alright guys, so please enjoy. Oh, the first shrine. Yeah, let's get the moral high. Sure. A pilgrim. Ah, this looks like a village. There are two guys. This looks like a merchant. We might just get some more wood. I thought so. Your Grace, the owner of this trading post, a dwarf by name of Branko Dahlberg, has invited you to browse his wares. How shall I respond? I certainly have a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna pay the thousand gold and get the wood, because, like I said before, getting wood is really, really difficult here. Hello there! The Queen noted a building with unusually lavish ornamentation, including shining bronze roof tiles and glistening rock crystal window panes. An important clan dwelled there, Gabor explained. The Brecon Riggs. Could you introduce me? Meeb asked. Perhaps I can convince them to intercede with Bruver on my behalf. The clan head, Ivor, invited Meeve to an exquisite feast. But when she broached the subject of the war raging just outside Mahakam's borders, the dwarf changed the subject at once. Looking around the interior, Meeve quickly understood why. The walls were ordained with Nilfgaardian tapestries and rugs. Gifts from friendly Imperial envoys, no doubt. Meeve prepared to leave, convinced she had wasted her time, when someone clasped her shoulder and pulled her into a darkened room. <laughs> I hear the name Ivar, and I think of Ivar the Boneless. It has nothing to do with this game. Ivar the Boneless is um, uh, Ivar the Boneless is a Viking. Her kidnapper turned out to be a young dwarf, female it seemed, dressed in her nightshirt. She has she a beard. She herself as Ivar's daughter, Eudora Breckenriggs, and openly admitted she had eavesdropped on Meeve's dinner conversation. Listen. Me dad's stubborner than an old goat, but I'll convince him to help you. For a wee favor, that is. Mm-hmm. What? I want you to steal something from the clan archive. Historiae Mahakamorum, tis called. See, me dad won't let me betroth me sweetikin Zoltan. Says the Codex forbids marrying a dwarf who's left the mountains. But there's precedent. Just such a case described in that document. Okay. If I can show it to Da, he'll have to change his mind. Me felt sympathy for Eudora and wanted to help her, especially considering the favor Eudora could do her in return. Mm -hmm. But she fully realized if her attempt to break into the archive ended badly, it would result in a tremendous scandal Bruva Hoog would not soon forget. That's true, but I will still try. Yeah, yeah. Let's do this. The pot's worth the play, I believe. Fine. I accept your offer. They then shook hands, sealing the deal. Meeve had to bite her tongue to stop from crying out, for the young she-dwarf had the grip of a brawny blacksmith. <laughs> Meeve returned to her company, and, massaging her sore hand, presented Eudora's offer. Gascon volunteered for the task at once. Thievery's my fault. Yeah. The dwarves won't notice a single mothball in the place. Cool. Let's do this. Gascon snuck into the archive under the cover of darkness. Just as he was tucking Eudora's desired document into his cloak, he heard dwarven boots clanking down the stairs. Damn it. Gascon swore. I can't let them catch me. So. What? We're going into battle. Uh, Maha Mahakaman Archives. At the campfire, Gascon had proclaimed himself a true master of stealth. He claimed he could cross the Novigrad market in full light of day, wearing naught but a jester cap with belts, and not a soul would notice. Well, 
the time had come for the Duke of Dogs to show his bark and some bite. Uh, to show his bark had some bite. To escape, move Gascon. Light footed to the bottom right corner of the battlefield. And move Gascon using your leader. It's a puzzle. Alright, let's take a look. This sounds promising. Oh, hoo -hoo. okay. To escape, move Gaskin light footed to the bottom right. He has to get to the bottom right. And we use we do this with our leader's ability. We have three. Let's take a look. Gaskin, burglar. Move self to an adjacent vertical or horizontal position. Charge is three. Every turn on turn start, gain three charges. So I can move him three times. And then when the round is over, I can move him three more times. Again. Because he will gain three charges. Okay. What do we don't have here? Uh, what do we have here down, uh, down here? <laughs> Wait for the Markham Guard to take a step. Oh, this is just... Ah! Choose a Markham Guard and force them to turn around. Ah, so that means... Wait. He's looking to his right. Whenever Gaskin moves, move this unit one position to the right. If it reaches the edge of the battlefield, turn it around. So if he goes here... Then he will go back this way. So he's just moving up and down this... Uh, ref, right and left. Right and left. He's moving left. Yes, he's moving left. Same as him. Hmm. What could be the best strategy? This unit will be spotted if located three positions away from a Mahakam guard. I'm happy that I looked at here because now it's even more difficult. I thought I could just I could just go and then go straight and do like this and then I'm there, but no. We spot if located three positions away from a Mahakam guard, but only if he's looking into my direction or any position. So, for example, if he would stay here, it would be like three um, positions away from this guy, but he's looking, but he's moving this way. But would he still see him? I suspect yes. So if I move him to the right now, he will move one step closer. Then there are three in between. Then I will have to turn him around. Okay, let's just get started. Uh, how do I move? Like this. Ah. Ah, wait. Vertical or horizontal? Yeah, ah, oh, it's not diagonal. I thought diagonal is possible. No. So just this and this. Alright, so let's move him here. They all moved. Alright. So I don't want him to get closer. He can move over to the side. I would like to move some more and then maybe down. Then I'm behind him. Hmm. So let's do let's, let's use No. Misdirection. On this guy. Huh? Who's there? What a love. That was close. Did he lose some power? Did he have seven before? Now oh, he has just f has four, or did he just turn to this guy? Interesting. Alright, so we can just move on the top row without getting seen because the other guy is moving right as well. So we can just do like two times to the right. In the meantime, the guy down, down below should move. Yes. One and two. Alright, and then he will turn around. Okay, end or turn. Yeah, he turned around. They are all over, they are over there. I need to move him one step further. And... Uh, That's not good. If I move him down, then there are... That's not good. Okay, I'm gonna try this. It says how many? Respond if located three positions away from a Markham guard. I wanna see if he will see me if I go here, because he will move over there, then there will be three. This might not be the best idea, but I'm gonna try this. So you're gonna move down here. Alright, I'm not being seen. This is good. And now, wait, he turned around as well. They're moving to the left, so I should go more to the right. He can't catch up. 
because he's gonna turn around next time and I have three uh, courtyards between me this should be good so you're moving over there yeah he didn't move awesome this is very good move him once more and I can't pass I do have to play a card yes uh, I think I need to misdirect him otherwise he will come to me Yeah, I think this might be the best idea. This guy. And our turn, yes. Piece of cake. Uh, it's not a piece of cake, I have to think a lot. <laughs> so, I can't move down yet, but I could just wait. Or although, although he didn't see me, I could just move down. Yeah. I'm gonna move him down. Because he's not going in my direction. This should be fine. It is. Go down again. We are close to the end. Uh, I still need another round. And I have to play a card anyways. Let's use this one. Yeah. Let them all move. Okay, let's end our turn here. And then next round... We should be at the end. Just a bit more. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, oh, we need to move him. We have four moves. And one more. Yeah, awesome. Easy as pie. Those gears are turning. <laughs> nice. I... Are you kidding me? You're giving me a blue screen game! I just finished that! Oh, come on! This is the second time I had a blue screen... Um, ...with The Witcher Tales. God damn it. That's the dragon, Caltalus, right? A pillar of smoke rose above the mountains, and a sooty aroma filled the air. Fire, Gabor said, then took a deep sniff. Perhaps a bolt struck some barren trees. No, Meave said curtly. I know that scent too well. All Edurn reeked of it. It's the smell of burning homes. The Lyrians quickened their gait. Soon they saw a town fully aflame, and a roaring, furious dragon above it. That's your Keltimus, hmm. Gaspar asked, shielding his eyes from the sharp glare emanating from the city. You were right. Perfectly harmless. The <laughs> king was get his knickers in a bunch, the dwarf said, grabbing his axe from his belt. Queen, we got to make haste to the rescue. Help fight the dragon or continue your journey? Nah, we're gonna help and fight the dragon. Reynard! Meave called out. Have our men wet their cloaks for a modicum of fire protection. We move as soon as they're done. Your Grace, they are but common soldiers to fight a dragon. I know, but we must help them, or at least try. While Reynard went to pass on the order, Meave turned to Gabble. This dragon, has it any weakness? Fear not, said the somber dwarf. Except that fondness for raw meat. Meave nodded and swallowed dryly. Despite the cold, she felt sweat pour down her scalp. Oof. Stifling her fear, Meave gave the order to attack, and her soldiers rode into the flaming city. From up close, Keltalis looked even more terrified. Though enormous, he moved with shocking agility, like a lizard scurrying over sand. With one swing of his paw, he snapped the necks of three dwarves, then bisected a forge with a powerful one. Oh. After that, he turned his attention to the Lyrians. More of you! He can talk? He said, twisting his bloody moor into a horrifying smile. 
Okay, uh, I am not prepared to fight a dragon. Fury, I'm gonna read it first, but I'm gonna load my last checkpoint and then adjust my um, deck. Fury of Caltalus. Before Meeve arrived in Mahakam, she had only ever imagined dragons, fantasized about them based on worn engravings and troubadours' tales. Now, would she not only see one in the flesh, she would attempt to slay it. The very thought paralyzed her with fear. How to wound a beast with scales with scales harder than steel, or defend, or defend against fire fiercer than that of the hottest furnace? Yeah, we have to eliminate him. Alright, I'll be right back. So, back again. Let's see if we can do that. Or if I have to readjust my party once more. It's not what I wanted. Stay 60! Together. 60! Are you joking? Alright, I have Mantico, which is pretty much useless because he's on the field already. He's not playing anything else. Um, I have the Flail at least. Oh, I should have taken the Lyrian Banner. Shite. Uh, every turn on turn start, spawn fire on the opponent's side. After three turns on turn start, move to the. Oh shit! And move to the opponent's side and damage all units there by one. He's, he's, he's spawning fire. Oh, this is not good. This is just not good. Hmm. And he's moving. Is he moving? After three turns on turn start, move to the opponent's side. So he's gonna move to my... Huh. Oh well. Gonna play the trap first just to hurt him a little bit. And we're gonna hurt him once more. So he used. Ah, on the back row then. That's not too bad. So I can still play on the front row. I hope this still. I hope this works. You sure about that? Yes, damage him by 10. Ah, he's out as well. Maybe not the best idea to stay back there, buddy. Wow. Every turn on turn start, force two adjacent units to duel this unit after three turns move to the... Oh, shite. Uh, and now I can't... If I use my... Oh, if I move this now... Uh, if I use this now, I'm gonna hurt my own guys. That's not good. All right, let's just get. Oops, voila. Let's get him back. The grace, we're taking losses. <laughs> ah, you don't say. <laughs> Shit. What was it? I thought three turns move to the enemy's melee row. He's attacking two adjacent units, and he's moving to the melee row. Ugh, this is not good. This is just not good. Actually, I'm gonna use this card now. I'm gonna hurt him by 15. I'm gonna heal him by 15. And then if he duels him, he's nearly dead. I think this is the best idea. Yeah, then he only has three, then I just need to play him once more and then it's over. This should be fine. Wait, what? Uh, what? Why did he stop dueling? Huh. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do it another way. Let's just play him. One, two, and three. Deed. <laughs> Perfectly harmless, yes. That day, many Lyrians perished, either to the dragon's all-consuming fire or to its flesh-rending claws. Yet their sacrifice was not in vain. Together with the dwarves, they were able to grievously wound Keltalus, forcing him to flee. The howls of the wounded monster rang throughout the valley. 
Uh, I'm sorry, but um, that many Lyrians did not die. Just a few. That's right, howl, you scurvy snake. <laughs> Shouldn't he have attacked us, eh? Damn fuel wizard. Damn right. Meave, that's Vavanik, elder of the town and all the Ferences. My regards and condolences. Eh, tain't so bad. If nay for ye, wouldn't there be a stone left unrubbled? <laughs> To be honest, when I caught wind some human queen come to Mahakam looking for aid, I said a crocus would sprout twixt my cheeks afore I'd vote aye on that. Gonna be a fear to look in my breeches after, but change my mind. After what I saw today, what ye did for us, you've the support and undying gratitude of all Ferences. Thank you. Faced with the Nilfgaardian peril, that means a great deal. Mm hmm. Forgive me for interrupting this tear tugging Sino interracial reconciliation, but I can't hold back any longer. Fabronic, double chase. <laughs> Quite helpless attack. Double chase. I can as much as ye, meaning squat diddly. Just flew up, started spewing flames, half the tune lit up in a flash. Sheep shank. 300 years I've been a good neighbor. What's done's done. Got to think about the future. The Drake's just taking a breather. Gotta finish him off for his regained form. Really? You wanna kill him? Meaning we have not much time. He heals like an alchemist's pup. And the nearest guards are miles away. He'll be up flying again before they get here. Aye, that's what I thought. Ahem. <clears throat> Perhaps your grace, you'd... Uh... What? Jest you must. Hmm. I ken you're tired through the fight. Dinna want to risk casualties, etc. But remember... A beast sleeping on a bed of gold and rubies. Ooh. All belonging by right to Boother, of course. But if a uh, quibbling sum wandered off, <laughs> they notice. <laughs> that does alter the equ equation. Oh, oh no, fighting a dragon once was enough. Yeah, I would try to fight him again. I admit that does alter my calculations. Besides, the dragon was badly wounded. Putting it feathery, blood poured out of him like a leaky bladder. Just needs a coup de gras. Fine, I'll do the deed. Can you see the light? Boy, Vavranek, Vavranek. This lady's gonna make your rump a regular crocus garden. Aye, Queen's doing us a great service. One that'll profit us both. So, where is Keltalus's lair? North of here. It's a vast cavern. Ye canna miss it. Meave bid farewell to Vavranek and set out on her way. Did her way lead to the dragon's lair, you ask? Shh. Let's not spoil the surprise. <laughs> um, okay, we're still here. Uh, let's just take a look at the map. If it is marked, he said north. So it's up there. Yes, yeah, so we will have to go there. Are you hurt? Trust a bohead and what do you get? A singe bahookie. <laughs> what? Brown, red, gold. Every dragon's a right bastard. Wait! I'm coming with ye! Really? Gonna beat that scaly bastard so hard he'll shoot fire out his ass! Nice, another unit. Awesome. There is his cavern. Let's go inside. Keltalis' lair was indeed impossible to miss, as would stand to reason, for any space capable of containing a dragon must be enormous. The lair's moor, a black triangle cut out of a vast plain of snow, loomed from afar. Confirming the dragon's presence was the powerful odor emanating from it, one of sulfur and blood. Well then. Gascon said. Ready to become a legendary dragon slayer? Who? at least I will try. Yes, enter. My father off said, never should you count pelts till the hunt is through. Meave said, dismounting her horse. It's all the more true when you hunt dragons. He's wounded, yes, but one puff of flame, and we shall be not legends, but corpses. Mm-hmm. Leave all thoughts of foolhardy bravery behind. The Lyrians crept across the dragon's threshold. They walked single file, shields raised, 
watched by bats hanging from the ceiling. Keltalus lay curled up on a bed of diamonds and gold coins turned red from his blood. Seeing how he strained merely to lift his massive head, Neve knew the dragon no longer posed any threat. So we're not fighting? Coming to finish what your poison began? The monster croaked hoarsely. Fine. Do it then. Keltalis turned over, exposing his vulnerable underbelly, and waited calmly for the fatal blow. I, I feel pity for the dragon. I wanted him on my side. Kill the dragon or talk to him. Let's just talk to him first. Yeah. Wait. Meave said, dropping her sword. What poison? <laughs> Keltalis laughed while squeezing his bleeding side in pain. So they didn't tell you? Lousy munchkins. <laughs> hey! Watch your tongue! Gabor yelled. Tate! I didn't care anything about it. Keltalis looked the Lyrians over mistrustfully with his snake-like eyes, then began to tell his tale. The caravan Meave had met on the road was different to the others. This time, Keltalis's meat had been pickled in a special brine, one spiked with poison. As the dragon lay curled up in pain, Ferenc dwarves entered his lair and smashed his legs. So if I understand correctly... Meave interrupted. You're female. Correct. Oh. Same as you. <sighs> as if on command, all Lyrian eyes turned to Gabor. Can you look at me? With an epic under his... Uh, half... Uh, it's... Deal. If I may, Reynard interjected. These revelations about Keltalus's sex are undeniably fascinating. But I'm more curious why the Ferences stooped to such a dishonorable deed. That's easy enough to guess. Yeah, definitely. Said. They were afraid the dragon would soon demand more tribute to feed its young. So they decided to strike preemptively. Oh, that makes sense. To the Ferences misfortune, they delivered too small a dose of poison. Infuriated at the sight of the broken eggs, the dragon gathered its strength and flew to the nearest town. Meave saw for herself what happened then. And now it was up to her to decide how this story would end. The dragon had killed dozens, perhaps even hundreds, but had been provoked first by the dwarves' heartless cruelty. Did it thus deserve death or mercy? Oh, this is this is really ah uh, this is difficult. I could still kill it or let Keltalus heal and leave Mahakam. Okay, he would leave. But the thing is, mm, I don't know for how. Wait, he said they that the dragon was peacefully there, living with them for three hundred years, but they all or, but they also said he was only peaceful because he wanted stuff from the dwarves. So he extorted them for 300 years. And then, okay, it's a female and she had some eggs and maybe some baby dragons soon. And they feared that it would require more gifts, way more than they could handle. That's why they smashed them. So I understand the dwarves, definitely. But I also understand the dragon who just wanted to protect her axe and was just... ...was just pissed that um, they destroyed it, them. But still, the, the one who started it all was the dragon. By extorting the dwarves, by wanting gold and rubies and stuff. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna kill the dragon. I understand your pain, Meave said. But nothing can justify the massacre you and that as well, yeah. Nothing. And what would you have done in my place? I wouldn't have extorted in the Sorted first place. Pen a letter of complaint to Elder and Chief Oak. They killed my children. 
I'd have done the same. The queen replied, not hesitating a moment. I'd have sought revenge, knowing what punishment I'd earn. The monster looked Meave in the eyes a long while, then dropped its head. I have no more strength to fight. I have no more reason to fight. Oh, this is so sad. Do as you see fit. Oh. Change your mind and spare the dragon or kill the wounded dragon. Nah, I'm gonna kill him. Meave raised her sword high and swept it down with enormous strength, cutting the scaled belly in twain. The monster bellowed out a long roar and writhed its tail, scattering diamonds everywhere. Then grew still. Keltalis, the last red dragon between the Great Sea and the Fiery Mountains, had breathed his last. The last? I didn't know that was the last. But okay, there's maybe another upside. So I helped the dwarves once more. So I'm on the good side of Hook again, hopefully. I hope they will tell the tale and I'm on his good side. There followed a strange silence. No one cheered. No one clapped. That was... Gascon said, the first to break the silence. Not terribly epic. <laughs> What'd you expect? Gabor said, arms akimbo. Fanfare and fireworks? The mountain to quake? He up and died. What else would he do? I am certain, Your Grace, Reynard said, that the poets will endow this moment with the appropriate splendor. I'm sure they will, the Queen said, sheathing her sword. For they are liars. And we have a trophy. I'm going to take a look at that in just a bit. The Queen told her soldiers to gather a part of the dragon's treasure. Small enough not to bring down the wrath of Ruva Hoog, but large enough to fully compensate the Lyrian's losses. And Meave gained the title of Dragon Slayer. Wow. Though she rarely made much mention of it. Yeah. I haven't seen how much gold did I get. I'm not quite sure. Probably not as much as I would like. So, let's take a look at the card. Keltalus. <sighs> and upside, I'm called Demon Slayer. So, mm. Permanent resilience, every three turns on turn start, damage all enemies on the melee row by two. Just on the melee row. This is not great. This is just not great, because if there's somebody on the melee row, I want to use Meave's flail ability anyways, to bring him back to the range row, where I would put my trap and my fire. This is my tactic at the moment. Otherwise, I wouldn't need her flail anymore. This might be another idea, if I don't use flail anymore, but I'm gonna boost my guys, then this might be useful, because otherwise I still have Manticore. Alright, let's take the shrine and get our morale up.